Hello, my name is Christopher Lozinski. I'm a Python developer retired from California. I moved to Katowice, Poland, and I recently signed up for graduate school in electrical engineering. Um, I also run uncensorednews.us, which is about climate change. So I had a strong feeling that there's some limitations in the mainstream CPUs that, that we get. And so the, clearly they're optimized for speed. They're not optimized for energy consumption. Reportedly, the um, the, in, the global cloud consumes at least 10%, maybe as much as 20% of, of energy globally. Um, they're also optimized for speed. They're not optimized for context switches. I think one of the reasons fourth is so strong in real-time control is because you need real fast context switches. And the other place that needs context switches are communicating sequential processes. So, and so the mainstream CPUs do not have any support for communicating sequential processes, the transputer did. Okay, so what are communicating sequential processes? Um, well, you can have multiple processes either on a single computer or on multiple, and they have dedicated channels between processes and then data flows between those channels. The microcore actually support has, I was really pleasantly surprised to see that the microcore has hardware support for communicating sequential processes. So we all know what an interrupt is, that's when something unexpected happens, but they also have something called a pause, which is an event which did not happen that was expected by the software. Maybe the software wanted to read uh, some data or it wanted to write some data, but wasn't able to do either one. It wasn't available or the device wasn't available. The microcore will then provide hardware support to pause the process and, and if it's multiprocessing, begin another one of the communicating sequential processes. So awesome, awesome stuff. The other thing I really like about the microcore is it has a lot of instructions, 52 core, 22 extended, 5 float, 5 byte instructions, 84 total, plus the software traps. If I'm trying to write an instruction um, using um, um, reduced instruction set computing, where I have to do lots of little instructions, I'm pretty sure that's going to com consume a lot more energy than one fat instruction implemented in, in silicon. It's going to have a lot fewer transistor changes, transitions consuming energy. So fat instructions are, I think, a really good idea for low energy consumption. Of course, it has some limitations. Um, the desktop software needs to be upgraded. Um, the um, J1 by James Bowman has this really lovely, simple Python application on the desktop. Very clean, probably quite easy to port. Also, the microcore, only one of the 84 words are in use at any time. So that seems like wasted space. It's just begging for having lots of processors all sharing those words. Maybe the stack manipulation words, which are used frequently, every processor can have dedicated hardware for that. But maybe a lot of the less frequently words used words could be shared by other processors. And then, of course, the microcore is in VHDL, but Verilog is much more fashionable. Other limitations, I'm just digging into the code for this. There are many fourth CPUs I'm looking at. Um, they all have some good thing, lessons to learn. Okay, so this has been really fascinating. Going back to graduate school, digital design is so different from software development. Um, System C is also, turns out, is also based on communicating sequential processes. So some large number of fourth CPUs all using communicating sequential processes would be much easier than system C because you're, you're really programming in fourth rather than trying to program uh, an FPGA. Um, and then low power fourth arrays, something like green arrays is also a very interesting area for me. Anyhow, I'm having fun. Thank you. Any questions? Okay, Christopher, thanks a lot. Uh, can I just say it's it's a it's a pity that Klaus is not here, who's the inventor of uh, of microcore. And I think uh, what his main intention was always that microcore is a side load, so it's not meant as the main CPU. So you're doing something fancy in v in, in in whatever you wanna do on your FPGA, and then this is just used to have a uh, standardized interface into it. So good to know. And a question I would be so I'll, I'll start with the first question and ask the others to raise their hand, please. Uh, I want to. I was be wondering because you mentioned power consumption. Aren't you scared that FPGAs require 
quite a lot more energy than an ASIC. So oh, absolutely, absolutely. So, so we need a good design, some small community, first prototype demonstrated on FPGAs, and then the European Union is just investing. What, I think it's 64 billion euros or something like that in um, in semiconductors, and also um, it would be they're very interested in low power. So it'd be great as a community to get together and really demonstrate that we can do these things with much more low power and then working together, get a big funding out of the European Union. I totally agree with you that FPGAs are, are less okay. efficient then. So, so you want to stay with the with the FPGA as long as you can. And then when you have finalized it, you do want to go down the ASIC route. I just I just don't have 50 million for a mask set. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, who has? <laughs> OK, are there any other questions for Christopher? Okay, I don't see any hands up. Let me check on Twitch. No. Well, uh, I'm going to relay this talk to Klaus and maybe he will come back to you uh, if you want. I'd love to chat. With him. I certainly think it's interesting. He normally hangs around at Euroforce. All right. Well, thank you very much, Christopher, for your talk.